Uh, so as it's kind of mentioned, spend a significant amount of my time uh, working on apartment sales in Missoula, Bozeman, and throughout the state, and then also in the uh, development uh, side of uh, apartments as well. So uh, I think seeing both sides of that has some kind of interesting playoffs between the two, and that uh, if you're investing in existing assets, uh, you, you're impacted by development and vice versa. Uh, so I think watching those two in, in tandem uh, is important to get the overall picture of how good investing can be or bad, I guess, in some cases uh, in uh, apartments. So try and cover both, both sides of that. Uh, so we, when we take uh, properties to market uh, on the brokerage side of our company, uh, we have two properties, property types that get the most attention. One is self-storage. As Claire mentioned, uh, when you bring those out, you get mobbed uh, with activity. And the second is apartments. Uh, so that was especially true in 2021 when money was cheap. And uh, we expected that as money got more expensive over the last six to nine months that there would be a, so, sort of a, a decrease in interest in both apartments and multifamily. And what we've noticed thus far is that that has really not been the case. Uh, we recently brought, it was just uh, 38 units of uh, apartments in uh, Missoula out to market and uh, had 10 offers inside of 10 days. Uh, over asking price, uh, cash offers, like all, all that sort of stuff. So the things that we saw in 2021 when money was cheap uh, is still occurring now even when money is not as cheap. So one uh, significant point I think to mention that that can change. Um, typically investment assets, uh, interest rates impact them, but it's not the only thing that uh, matters. It's often a spread over the 10-year treasury. So monitoring the 10-year treasury is often um, more important than interest rates uh, coming out of the Fed or uh, whatever your local banks are. So interesting takeaway, kind of was somewhat surprising to us to see how much activity uh, persists in the apartment market and, and self-storage and a couple other uh, investment markets, even though interest rates have been r rising. And that's basically all you hear, uh, it seems like, in the news anymore is that uh, another three quarter point you know, interest rate increase from the Fed uh, seemingly every month. Um, so digging more into the multifamily side of things, um, I, sometimes when we talk about this throughout the state, we get a little, you know, people don't like to hear the term crisis when you refer to housing. Um, but I think um, in Bozeman, it's hard to describe it any other way. It's probably true in Missoula as well and, and a handful of other markets. But uh, vacancy is so low that it, as Connor was mentioning, it, you, people can't find a place to live. And so it's really hard to keep uh, your uh, business staffed if your employees can't find a place to live. And so there's this interesting tie between lack of availability of housing and population growth. If you have housing availability, your population grows quickly uh, or more quickly. And then if you don't have housing availability, your population doesn't grow as quickly. And then you have a difficult time uh, staffing uh, staffing your company, uh, whether, that, whether that's retail or uh, professional office. Uh, so that's a, a trend we've seen, uh, especially in Bozeman, and you call Bozeman a bellwether of what Montana can expect if you are not proactively in front of the, the housing pipeline, delivering uh, housing, removing roadblocks to development and that sort of thing. Um, as I think anybody that's worked in development uh, in Bozeman can attest, it's a pretty uh, lengthy process, it's a difficult process, time consuming, all those things. Uh, so you can't fix a problem that it exists today immediately. It takes a very long time to get things through the pipeline. So just jumping into stats without getting too, uh, you know, over overly digging into particulars, but I think the big note is that uh, for the for 2022, or the first half of 2022, the vacancy rate for apartments uh, it was 1.3 percent. So that is obscenely low. Uh, basically to the point where the market almost does not function. You can have turnover and barely that. Uh, so there's very few options for people looking for space. At least that's been characteristic of the first half of the year. Um, our research team just completed the Bozeman market survey for Q3 uh, two days ago. And uh, there is an upward uh, tick in, in vacancy. It's up to 2.7%. So that is a big increase. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, a healthy market is generally considered to be between 4 and 5% on vacancy, and we're still uh, significantly below that. But that is an interesting data point when you're looking at trends, and if you invest in this stuff, uh, depending upon what, you write, what number you write into your uh, pro formas, uh, can drastically change the overall 
quality of the investment or whether you want to do the investment. So paying attention to vacancy rate and vacancy rate trends, very important. So looking at the average lease rates uh, across, the, uh, across Bozeman, uh, $2,200 uh, for a unit is uh, also exceptionally high. It's about $1,000 more on average per unit in Bozeman than it is in Missoula. One other thing to note here uh, is the sales transactions uh, for Bozeman. Uh, there's tons of activity of people interested in it. Uh, I think we field calls without exaggeration every day from somebody looking for apartments in Bozeman or in Gallatin County, and there are very few transactions. And often it's because people, uh, they don't have a place to go with the money if they were to sell. Uh, so that's a common thing that we hear. Um, so I guess to give you a scale, there's 12 sales transactions uh, in, uh, in, in the trailing 12 months, the last 12 months uh, in Gallatin. Uh, and if you compare that to Missoula, there are about 30 transactions. So uh, not that much activity on the sales side uh, in Bozeman. However, the average sale price per unit of the ones that have transacted are about $305,000. So that is the highest of any market in, uh, in Montana. Uh, so worth noting on that side of it. And then the last thing, uh, the units under construction right now, so the ones that are actually like coming out of the ground, there's about 1,200 units, and I'll dig into that a little bit more when you start talking about how the development pipeline interplays with the existing asset, um, that market, and how it uh, compares, and then how they impact each other. So 1,200 units under construction. Uh, Quickly, I guess the thing that, that drives a lot of this in multifamily is that it's, it's household growth, job growth, and that all stems from, or sorry, so population growth is uh, then feeds the household growth, and all of that is then fed by uh, job growth. So I don't think it's any secret that uh, Bozeman has been growing rapidly. It's been as high as 3.2% uh, annual growth in recent years. Uh, this information here comes from uh, the American Community Survey, so it, it's basically a census product that makes extrapolations and, and, um, and uh, projections on where the population is. So obviously, you do a census every 10 years. That was done in 2020. The current estimate based on the American Community Survey is that the population in Bozeman currently is just under 120, or sorry, not in, this is in Gallatin County. Uh, so in Ga Gallatin County as a whole is about 125,000 people. And then the projection over the next uh, five years until 2027 is population growth in the 2.4 range is the projection coming out of uh, the census. So there's a bunch of factors that play into that, but that is where they're projecting for it to go. So right now the vacancy rate is very low uh, in Missoula, or in uh, sorry in Bozeman, and um, but you're we're already seeing some trends and data points showing that the the vacancy rate is ticking up. So what drives that? So um, all of these, you know, any any when anytime you make a projection, you have to take what your variables are and, and kind of narrow it down to a couple of variables and try and hold the variables still so that you can make projections and say, if everything else is equal, then if, if you know, these, uh, these numbers come forth, this is what we can anticipate in terms of demand for new housing units and then what that does to vacancy rates and to rental rates. So the, the kind of a simplified formula for this on how you project where demand is going in the future is you take what your population growth is from year to year you divide that by the average household size uh, for an area, and then you take the sum of that and you multiply it by the percentage of the population that rents, and that, can, that gives you an estimate of the number of rental units that need to be produced uh, every year just to maintain an equilibrium. So basically to create enough rental units for, to keep up with population growth. So that's what this simplified formula is here. Uh, so our marketing team loves it when we do uh, calculus in, pu in public here. Uh, math in public is always a really good idea, but uh, I think it helps show just uh, what, what demand comes from or where the demand is in a given market. So using the numbers we talked about before, so the total population by the ACS estimate is about 125,000. If the population growth is what the projections are from the census for, uh, for Bozeman over the next uh, five years of about 2.4%. You multiply uh, 125,000 by 2.4%. That tells you your annual growth of about 3,000 people, 3,024 people. And then you take your average household size. So again, assuming that these stay the same, it's 2.4 now, it has been approximately 2.4 for the last five years. You divide the annual population growth 
by the household size, and that gives you the total number of new housing units needed. So that's rental units and for sale units. So around you know 1,260 units uh, is what is needed just to maintain your vacancy rates uh, and and basically keep up with population growth. So if you take that 1260, the total uh, housing units that are needed, you multiply it by the renter population, which in in Bose, or sorry in Gallatin, so this is across Gallatin, uh, of 39%, uh, give or take, is the renter population. Then you would need 491 total rental units, so that's of all types. And then out of that, about 26% of the population lives in apartments, so 327. Again, these things have to stay, you know, it's all else being equal. So population growth has to be 2.4%. The average household size is still 2.4. Those things have to hold steady for this to apply. But if you do, do this math out, this gives you a reference point of what is your, to you know, keep up with population growth, how many new apartment units do you have to be putting out into the market to keep up with it? So 327, uh, that number is worth remembering. So this is the development pipeline of what is currently under construction and then projections for the next uh, two years plus, so really out to 2025. So in, in, uh, for 2022, we have, uh, there's, there have already been units delivered this year. There's about 320 more to deliver this year of market rate housing, and then there's another 184 uh, affordable subsidized units that are in the pipeline. So if you tally those two together, that is beyond the, what is indicated for the kind of your stasis number to, to maintain stasis. So we are delivering more units than the population would demand is, is how you read this. And then if you look at 2023, there's about 690 units in the pipeline that are actually already out of the ground and under construction that are supposed to deliver in 2023. So again, if 327 is your reference point to stay at kind of your stasis point, we're going to deliver about double that um, in 2023. So generally what you would expect in that circumstance, again, if everything else is staying equal, is that your vacancy rate will continue to tick up and then your rental growth rate will level off or possibly even decline. Um, that, that is what you would, you would normally expect. There's a couple of those variables that can change for different reasons that would have an impact on that. But again, all this being equal, this is what you'd expect. But I think what's really worth looking at is that um, 2024 and beyond, there are uh, almost 2,000 units uh, that are in the pipeline to be delivered. So they have not broken ground yet. They do not necessarily have a permit issued. We track varying stages of where uh, projects are in the pipeline. And not all of these may come out of the ground. Interest rates may get it. Uh, construction costs may kill projects, things like that. But I guess we're trying to show here is that if all of these projects that are currently in, either in planning or permit were to come out of the ground, you would have in the course of 2024 and 2025, somewhere in the order of 2,000 additional units beyond what is going to be produced in 22 and 23, stuff under, already un, under construction. So for comparison's sake, there's a lot of numbers, but uh, you have about roughly 3,000 units that are in the pipeline. That is about 80% of the total current inventory of apartments in Bozeman. So that, that Bozeman is hot, it is growing fast, but that is a lot of units for uh, a relatively small county. Uh, to be producing. Um, so I, I guess the takeaway from that is, in the near term, there's not the, the sky is not falling. But I think w one of the difficulties that we see in, in markets that aren't covered by third-party data services, so uh, the you know CoStars and Integra and, and all, all these different things, is that it's hard to tell when a, when the market generates a signal. So like low vacancy says you should go build stuff because there's not enough housing and people want it. Uh, that, that signal is generated by the market, but it takes so long for a project to work its way through and nobody knows what the, the pipeline is. A lot of people can go build the same thing and it delivers all in the same period. And then that's where your, your bubbles come from, your overbuilds come from, is because people aren't looking to the left and right and saying, hey, hey this guy's building 600 units, he's building 300 units over here. Um, what does that do to me when my project is done? 
Uh, so I think part of the reason why we do Market Watch is Montana doesn't have a third-party data service, uh, really. And so we've, we've tried to build that starting in Missoula. We've been doing it for two years in Bozeman and trying to expand it throughout the rest of the state so that you can see some of these you know, uh, data points here and, and, and consider it when you're looking at investment projects and development projects and say, hey, is this, you know, what's this going to look like when this project is done and is this still a good decision? So by no means are we saying that it's a, um, yeah, sky's falling or anything like that, but it is worth noting that there's an awful lot of uh, units uh, that are in the pipeline and that could have an effect on your project uh, when it's two, three, four years from now when it finishes. Uh, so worth noting. In, the, in any of these cases, when you have periods of overbuild, the projects that do the best are the ones with the best location. So right now, you can go build a project anywhere with anything, and it will fill up because there's no alternatives. But as alternatives are presented to the market, then the places that have the best location, amenities closest by, walkable, all those kind of things, will tend to do better than the ones that are built on the outlying, built in the outlying areas and don't have the amenities. So to the extent that you can control it, it's worth investing in good locations as a uh, you know, bubble-proofing uh, mechanism for your projects. Just a quick uh, data, a couple of data points here on land sales overall. Uh, land is expensive in Gallatin County. It's, uh, again, not a surprise. Downtown CBD land uh, is over $100 a foot. And then in Bozeman proper, commercial land generally selling for about $23 a foot. Obviously, there's fluctuation in these. These are average numbers. Uh, your industrial, Bozeman industrial in Bozeman proper, uh, approximately $17 a foot uh, there. So one thing to take away from this is that there are some opportunities for cheaper land in the county and kind of outlying areas around, uh, around Bozeman. And you can see that there's a pretty substantial uh, you know, discount that, is, uh, that goes along with either unzoned land or commercial and industrial land out in the outlying areas. So uh, take that when you're looking at projects, whether it's you know, multifamily or, uh, or industrial, those, those sorts of things. Obviously, there's some uh, discounts that can be had in the county. To wrap this up, um, covering takeaways, I guess, across all the different asset types. Um, I think the trends that you see and, and some of the headwinds that you're going to see is that exceptionally low vacancy is, if you're an investor, looks very good, but you also have the flip side of that where you, you, ha you can't hire people. Your tenants, your retail tenants, your industrial users, your office users, if they can't hire people, then that becomes an uh, economic uh, drag. So vacancy is good uh, in one sense if you're an investor, but it also can be a counterbalance and a drag simultaneously. So I think you know, targeting more healthy vacancy rates for multifamily, again, in that four to five range. Uh, for industrial, generally you see it, uh, you know, historically it's been closer to seven to eight percent. Those things actually allow for some flexibility in the market, which you know, actually avoid some of the economic drags that you can see like we were, we're currently seeing both here and throughout the state. Um, again, another, you know, no secret to anybody is construction costs are exceptionally high uh, right now. Um, I know that uh, we've had medical office projects in Gallatin that have been quoted at over $600 a foot to build them, which is, uh, I mean, seems outrageous. Uh, those are definitely putting uh, a damper on some projects. We've seen numerous development projects in both uh, Missoula and, and here that have just stopped. They've been paused because you cannot make the numbers pencil, especially as your cost of money goes up. Uh, so that is going to be a, con uh, you know, a continuing uh, difficulty in not just here, but across the, the nation uh, as these construction costs go up. And then national economic conditions. So obviously a lot of talk and concern about uh, recessions as there's been some negative economic data and, and some of these other things. Uh, those, even if the local market is not necessarily in a recession, a national market that is in recession can tend to drag down uh, local markets. So these will be headwinds that we expect to see over the next year to 18 months. Uh, maybe even in, maybe even beyond that. For opportunities, uh, to the extent that you can do it, given the above on the headwinds where rising construction costs and some of these other things, uh, spec build, especially in industrial, uh, has done exceptionally well. So the projects we've been involved in where people take the kind of take the leap of faith and they build on spec and they're you know informed by what uh, market rates are for 
uh, for industrial and some of these other asset types. Uh, if you have a project that is already under construction, the odds of leasing it go through the roof. Uh, if you have a theoretical project that is a drawing somewhere and a, a maybe down the, down the line, those are much more difficult to lease. Uh, we've had an, a couple of, uh, you know, effectively spec build industrial warehouses that lease the second you break ground because then the, the end users are convinced that it's an actual project and not some theoretical. Uh, alternative construction methods, there's some promise in that, yeah, whether it's through combination of factory production of components, uh, whether it's panels or uh, those sorts of things to cut down, especially in, in, in Gallatin where it is a severely labor constrained market where you can use the power of a factory to reduce uh, the nim number of labor hours required to produce um, some of the basic inputs to uh, to housing, uh, for one, uh, there is a lot of promise in that, and there's been an awful lot of investment in that, both nationally and also in Montana. And then adaptive reuse, uh, to the extent that you can, again, because construction costs are so high, if you're able to take an existing building, buy it well below the, the reconstruction cost, uh, there are opportunities there to basically realize value by through adaptive reuse projects. So that's the uh, takeaway. We try to keep this relatively short and sweet. If you have any particular questions on any of the topics, uh, I've got Claire, Casey, Connor, myself, and Ryan, who are uh, happy to answer questions uh, if you so desire. Um, one last thing, we are not providing tax, legal, or accounting advice, so if you've got a you know, specific, specific question, uh, talk to your CPA or tax attorney uh, related to your situation. We are happy to talk about what our uh, perception of the market and the, what we have seen in the market. Um, and but obviously we're not uh, lawyers or CPAs here. So with that, uh, we'll wrap this up. Please uh, stick around and uh, have a beer with us and uh, happy to talk with you. Thanks for your time.